welcome back to Face the Facts. It's been a probably one of our longer hiatuses that we've had in quite a bit. It's Nick Face here. We have Tom Smith here and Phil Healy, our program coordinator over at Norcam Studios. Lots to talk about because every team has something that was going on or is going on. We have to do a funeral for the 2021 Boston Red Sox because their season came to a crashing end uh, about a week back. So we'll talk about that where the future lies. We have the Bruins season who started. We have the Celtics who are uh, looking pretty good, you know, to start their season. We'll have Phil's little expert opinion there. The Patriots got back on their winning ways of an explosion against the Jets. I only wish we could play the Jets every week, but you know, it is what it is. So we'll talk about all that. I want to start first with the Red Sox because they were the surprise, the big surprise. We all know how much I continued to one foot in, one foot out. What are we going to expect? What's going on with everything going on? And I do have to, I do have to say that I do think that this team overachieved greatly, but that's just my side of it. I was a little bit more optimistic, though, because when they were up 2-1 in their series, I kept saying to myself, do we really have a chance? I believed, I believed a bit. I did think that we were going to get to the promised land and get to the World Series. So they kind of teased me again. And I felt like that was how the season kind of played out. It's like you criticize, but then they come back and they do something to prove you wrong. But then they go on, on one of those, like, horrendous streaks and they look awful i thought the playoffs were kind of a microcosm in a way of how you started your season you know when they started the, the series against the the tampa rays it was kind of like that zero and three start when you had against baltimore to begin the year and then you went on some sort of run that went you know everything went their way pitching was great offense they were putting up 10 plus runs a game and then it came back to that Augusty, smelly, rotten, crappy baseball kind of feel. Bad base running, errors getting made, can't hit, can't hit out of a brown paper bag, nothing. Nothing they could do right. So let's talk what our overall opinions and thoughts are here on Sox. You heard my stance. Why don't we throw it over to Phil first for today? Overall thoughts on how the year kind of played out. Yeah, I mean, listen, we had a bunch of ups and downs for a good portion of the season. You know, we were one of the best teams, if not the best team in the American League. Uh, and then you had your August slump, which was something, uh, uh, a haymaker back to the Yawkey days or before, uh, you know, John Henry and that organization took over. I mean, that's kind of what I was used to as a kid and growing up until the team was bought in the early 2000s by um, Henry and, <clears throat> and Warner and whatever. So, I mean. Yeah, this, uh, but I will say, and they kind of clawed their way back into the playoffs. They had that one game because la- I think the last show we had was the day of the Yankees uh, Red Sox one game playoff, which was awesome. And it's like you could right. feel, you, yeah, and, and you could feel the, um, you could feel the, the electricity in the air. Every like I will, and they took care of business there, and that was great. That was a great Evaldi game, and we we kind of called it because he's kind of a Yankee killer. And also, Evaldi's a big-time pitcher, and he showed that this postseason, even in that loss to Houston, which, you know what? And I, I thought, oh. no, it isn't. It isn't his fault because they had plenty of uh, chances in that game four to build on that two-to-one lead. And you know what? You kind of felt it in, in your bones that, you know, uh, Astros, they're one, of the, they're one of the better teams in the, in the league, and they had your number during the season. You had to figure you were going to keep them down for so long. But also, uh, yeah, man, your luck might have just ran out. And, uh, I mean, I don't know. They had, they had some clutch hitting. And you just – you could your pitching couldn't get it done at, at the end and your hitting couldn't get it done at the end. But you had it. I, and and I, in my heart, I was like – in my mind, I'm just like, they have to win game four. If they don't, I don't think – because they can't, like, go toe for toe for the team, I don't think. But, you know, and they got lucky with Tampa. They got lucky and they just hit the cover off the ball, too. So 
don't know. They had a good good run. I mean, could I say they overachieved? I mean, I get slightly from what they were doing. Yeah, from what how they presented themselves at the end of the year. Yeah, they overachieved and they went farther than I thought they were going to go. And who knows what what will what will that bring? But yeah, I had a, I had a great time. This team won ninety four <laughs> games, ninety four games for a team that everybody thought was not even going to be anywhere close to a playoff bound team. And it's weird to say this about our expectations here in Boston, because we always raise the bar as high as we do. It's World Series or bust. It's championship or bust kind of mood. But this team, for whatever reason it was, it's a different kind of feel. I think it was because of all these expectations that they achieved and they got to a certain point. How can you get upset for a team that wasn't supposed to really be there? You really can't. To Phil's point, game four was the crucial game of the series. So they brought Evaldi in to close or to keep the game kind of close from that. And truthfully, and I think, Phil, you you would probably agree with this. Tom probably as well, too. That was strike three. Should have been tied. Oh, 100. The of the ninth right there. 100 percent. The, game. the yeah. umpiring, not just in this Red Sox and Astros series, across the board in baseball has been atrocious and I am never have been for robot umpires, but you, you better get them because these, the human element, it ruins many of these teams games. Look at the poor giants. Did you guys see what happened to them on their series getting, getting ended by the Dodgers? Yeah. That last, and you know what? That, I that, just, that, uh, that check that swing last, that was yeah. really a check swing. That's terrible. You can't end a series to get that way. You can't. Uh, no, and I listen. Like, yeah, that was a strike three from Evaldi to get out of that inning, and it's two two at that point, right? Is it two two at that point? Yes. It, it was. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, uh, I'm not gonna say the damage was done because you you got out of it, and also, listen, you're gonna get those the balls and strikes. There's nothing you can do. We got that whole game, like you said, the official, the ref for, or the uh, umpiring. For it, all the whole postseason was kind of iffy. I mean, what yeah. are you gonna do? There's nothing. But they didn't. They didn't. They had plenty of times when you had like a Kiki uh, Hernandez double or even triple with like an out or no outs to lead off, and then he was stranded at second or third. Okay. And like there are other like they had they had options to put push people over, and they didn't have timely hitting in that game towards the end. So you and, just hit it right there. Is the timely hitting component the clutch factor? And for whatever reason. You didn't see much of it. I do remember in the Washington series, one of the series before the season ended, you saw some clutch hits from like an Alex Verdugo and a J.D. Martinez and that kind of stuff. It just wasn't there that much in the postseason. Another guy that showed up a little bit. He was great when he got, you know, pickup. That was Kyle Schwarber. But really in the playoffs, I think he went like three for 35. He had a big grand slam in one of the series with the Astros, but that was it. Bobby Dahlbeck completely disappeared. You know, he, he was somebody that beat up on the bad teams, but could not play baseball against a Yankees or a Rays or a Astros lost in space. I think what also hurt this team and a very underrated move that happened, which you wish that this guy could have played in the postseason, was Jose Iglesias. They missed him quite a bit in the playoffs, but you couldn't have him on your postseason roster because he was traded after the eligibility. So he had to be traded before September 1st, and it just it just wasn't there. You had to put Christian Arroyo back in there, and I think he's a poor man's Jose Iglesias. You know, he had some flashes, but overall not that, not that spectacular. Um, another player that I think you expected a lot more of. There might have been an injury related to it. Not sure. Xander Bogart's disappointed me quite a bit this past season. He he was a shell of himself, in my opinion. I thought his defense was sporadic. For whatever reason, with with clutch hitting, he wasn't he wasn't really delivering the expectation that I think we all expected. Uh, J.D. Martinez had a terrible second half of the season. Terrible, terrible. Had a great first half. Great, great, great. I'm not taking that away. But 
those are some players. Those are your big names. And you're counting on some of those guys to get the job done on that, on that factor. And they just didn't do it. The other one I was going to mention too, that just completely disappeared in the playoffs was Hunter Renfro. Had a great regular season. Had close to 30 home runs, close to hundred RBIs for a guy that they picked up for, I think it was like three mil. I mean, what a bargain he was. But on the biggest stage, on the biggest level, when you don't produce on those levels, what do you want that player back? Do you, do you want if they can't get it done in the in the biggest stage, what what good are they in a way? You know what I mean? Um, um, go ahead, Tom. I, I think it all comes down to uh, experience. I mean, the Astros that team has pretty much been together the last five six years. Um, so the fact that like this Red Sox team was able to even exceed expectations this season and be able to get as far as they did in the playoffs, I think that's a huge, huge, uh, deal for that, for that team. And I think it's gonna, they're going to come back in a bigger, better way next season. Honestly, I, all they really need to improve upon really is the bullpen. Um, probably and, some, I would do some other upgrades. I, I, I'm pretty much done with Vasquez. I still I don't like his play calling. I don't like his bat. I think he's lazy. I think he needs a lasso around him when he runs the bases. I'm done. I'm done on that factor. So maybe they bring in somebody new. I'm hoping for that. They have to make a decision here on J.D. Martinez. He also has a decision too. Is he going to opt in and stay or are they going to go in another direction? I think the other move they have to figure out is first base. I don't see Bobby Dahl back as the future here. They have another guy in, in uh, Worcester, Tristan Casas, who is just about ready to come up. This offseason is actually going to be pretty eye-opening, I think, because I think you're going to see some moves. Renfro might be one of those moves. Dahlbeck may be one of those moves. They even have to decide what the future holds for Devers and Bogarts here. You know, Devers has in my opinion, should not be playing third base. I think he's more of a DH first base type. Are they going to make that move? Is Xander your short, your shortstop? You have to decide upon that. Or you're going to move him to maybe third base or second base and bring in another guy. We'll see. So I do think – oh, go ahead. Sorry. No. No, oh, that, that was, that's, I was going to wrap up. So yeah. I'm just going to say that's, that's more so of what things are going to look like. I think the rotation is going to be looking okay. I'm still very concerned on Chris Sale. I think that that's a bad contract. I don't think he's going to come back to be anywhere near as close to what we've seen in the past of a Chris Sale. I know he just came back from Tommy John. It takes build up time to get yourself ready. I don't see it, guys. I don't see it. So they got to figure out what they're going to do there. Is Tanner Hoke, is Garrett Whitlock, are they stepping into the rotation? I hope they ship Martin Perez and Garrett Richards and all those guys to Siberia. Get them out of here. Get them out of my face. I'm done. I don't want to see them on this team here. Um, and I would also definitely look to bring in another closer. They need another person. Uh, no, this Matt Barnes head case bull crap. Let's be honest here. Matt Barnes came back and screwed this team. He did. He did. They didn't have an anchor at the end of that bullpen. And they, they, they really missed that part there too. So that's my stance on the team. Uh, I know Phil was going to add in another thing too. No, just quickly. I actually, I like Devers defense at third uh, from what I saw at the postseason. I actually thought it was pretty good. I thought Dan, uh, actually I also thought Bogarts was pretty decent at, at short, but yeah, I can see I, who knows if they're resign them at like their max contract, you know, coming up. And I figured, I, I think Bogarts is already under contract for like another year or is it he is like, under one more year? Yes, that is correct. And so who I, and you know, they went on record to say like the other day, uh, like, Oh, we don't, we don't, we're not going to look to free agency. And who knows if that's true. And they're just like, kind of just talking their philosophy or whatever. Uh, yeah. It, it seems we've silly. Seen, we've seen too much here. Yeah. Whatever it is with this team, homegrown talent, you can even go back to the days of Nomar, go back to Pedro, go back to Derek Lowe, Roger Clemens. Yeah. They're out of here. They don't hold on to their players. They just don't. That is the one caveat with this ownership group that John Lester, another great example, 
they ship them out. And you know what typically happens with some of these players? Nine times out of 10, they end up still producing and doing well. Uh, Mookie hey. Betts. Mookie Betts. That's one of the things like you, you certainly missed him. Yeah. But hey, yeah. go Braves. That's all I got to say. I think they missed the most out of Mookie. And I will even say, I think they missed a lot with Jackie Bradley with the defense. The defense this, this season was, I never thought it was going to be like that. The defense was horrid, horrid across the board. The mental mistakes, the stupidity. Yes, they led the league in outfield assists. I could give a flying, you know what about it. Catch the freaking baseball. And they couldn't do it. They got lucky with Kiki, tell you the truth. They got lucky with him going to center and ended up being pretty damn good out there. Anything else on the uh, funeral of the, of the Red Sox? I will say we are, we are in a much, much, much better spot than, we, than the New York Yankees. Man, to be a fan of them right now. Oof. Well, they, you know, but they could go out and get Correa and they could get a bunch of other, who knows? But who Phil, knows? to that point, I mean, look at what they've done with throwing money at players. Stan, oh, that's a, yeah, and, that's fine. And Garrett Coles. Look where it gets them. It I will say that Mark Teixeira, no. all the, Mark all the guys. That yeah, but that, you're talking about a decade ago with the sheriff. But I, it's still, it's yeah, it, that, the, I think the no, no. biggest problem with the Yankees is management. Aaron Boone back for another three years is the <laughs> gift that just keeps on giving to the Red Sox. That buffoon is back again. Brett Gardner thinking he's the clubhouse leader of the pack over there freaking midget little guy that he is like no i do he, i too like brett gardner he is like the bernie williams of that group back. Eh, back. I, I think he's a good he's like, he's like your trot nixon he's like your trot nixon that's what he is to the yanks but that's listen i think trot nixon. well hey what are you gonna do <laughs> i think but also like stanton but you got to give credit like San, i will say stanton was kind of a waste of space like the first year but this past year, he was pretty fantastic. We were pretty lucky. No, we he was. I mean, we were pretty lucky uh, in that one game playoff that he didn't have two home runs. I mean, he just missed it by like how many feet? All we have to do with Stanton is throw the ball in the dirt and he'll swing at it. Well, I mean, it stuff. it seems the Red but Sox it's, the Red Sox screwed up with the approach. I think with with pitching. Well, possibly, yeah. It he almost had to hit. Throw yeah. it out of the zone because with his, the way he swings, but sometimes of, he can hit it. You know reason, why? But yeah. Um, I just look at the whole thing with the Yankees. I just laugh. It's I, I, I love it. You know, my uncle, my uncle's a Yankees fan, and I'll I'll razz on him for for days about it. But at least we have something to smile about with that team. So, anyways, I'm more concerned with the Blue Jays and the Rays moving forward, not the Yankees. Not the oh, Yankees. really? I'm more concerned with them. Yep. Because more so the Blue pitching? Jays. To tell you the truth. More so the Blue Jays. I think the no, Blue Jays the... are going to be worse. I'm. I'm scared to death of what Vladimir Vlad, Vlad Jr. and Bichette and some of this pitching that they have coming up. The Blue Jays, if the Red Sox played the Blue Jays in that one game playoff, I think they lose. Truthfully, guys, I do. I think they would have lost. Really? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, they're on they were on a streak too. It was between them and was it them in Oakland or was them in Seattle? Uh, it was them in Seattle, I think. Yeah. Right? Yep. We yep. were we were yep. this close to having like a four way like playoff. Yeah, yeah Oakland's in the mix here too. They did, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was Seattle. That was Seattle and Toronto. Seattle, Oakland, Oakland, the Blue Jays, the Red Sox, and the Yankees. They were all battling it out for. Uh, it was crazy, man. It was pretty great. Uh, do you have a prediction for World Series? Who are we rooting for? Braves. Braves, all the way. They are already it, won game it'll... one. You know they they deserve one. They've they've been wanting one for so far. One they're up one zero. But their ace is out. I know Charlie Morton is out. Morton yeah, is out. Is That's out. crazy. Yeah, but, hey, but you know, what? look at Atlanta. They, they, they might got get Marcelo Suna out. They've got some other big names yeah. out, and they still keep getting it done. Kudos to that team. Yeah, what are you saying, Tom? I'm sorry. Tom dead. Let's see. My internet connection is unstable. <laughs> All right, there we go. I can hear you guys now. Yeah, no, I mean, I was going to say, though, like, it, it's kind of funny to see John Smoltz 
commentating on this series now and being like one of those guys that should have won a World Series 20 years ago and wasn't able to. And Wait, I thought he, I thought he won one, didn't he? He won one. Series, they won one. 95. 95. But they, but they uh, had Maddox, been. Maddox, Smoltz, uh, Glavin all have one. And that's insane that they only won one. That's the thing. That's kind of the well, tragedy. Yeah, they haven't been to yeah. the World Series since 99. Correct. Oh, I remember that too. That was actually that year, because that was the year of the phantom tag on Jose Offerman. I don't know if any uh, you guys might be too young. Yeah, I don't know. Offerman. Uh, and Chuck Offerman. Noble. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At one point, Jose Offerman was the 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 largest contract in MOB history at the time when he signed with the Sox from Kansas City. Um, but yeah, no, that was '99. I remember that year, and the Yankees crushed them. Like it was like in five games or something. That was I think that was like one yeah. year that I actually really cared about baseball because that was the year that the All Star Game was in Fenway. That's right, '90. That was and Pedro struck out uh, the roided side, like the, the <laughs> like the Mount Rushmore of roided heads. The roided Indians. Yep, you got your the, Albert Bells. Your to- well, I don't know if Tommy was. No, there. it was no because he, he pitched again. I think he pitched in. Oh, that 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 yeah. In the All Star game. Sosa, McGuire, yep. McGuire, uh, Jeremy oh, Burnett's, I think uh, Barry Larkin walked. Uh, he struck. I thought he he struck out the side. I thought, or he was he, he only did. there for an inning? He struck or? out five of six. He struck out. Oh five wow! Of six that, that yeah, game. it was. Yeah. And that was at Fenway. And that was that kind and of. It was yeah. That was. Legend. It was a crazy year. It was a crazy year. That was the one where Ted Williams came out in the golf cart too. That's right. And his son was trying to sell whatever off of his body. Yeah. Selling you want a piece cart. of Ted? Yeah. Here you go. Um, cart. I bought his fingernail uh, for twenty thousand. Here you go. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Transition over uh, for an update on how the Boston Celtics look because my take, and I don't know if this is true or not. I'd love to hear it. It seems like this team is jiving really well with um, Adoka, their coach. Yeah, he's called them out. He called them out after the second game, said they got punked. Um, and he seems to be letting them do their thing in a way where it's just like, you know, if they if they fail, it's on their terms. But also, uh, yeah, they seem to enjoy him. I mean, I don't know if you saw after their first, uh, their first win against Houston, they were like, you know, fake champagne, you know, Gatorade, like all over him in the locker room in Houston. So uh, they were throwing, you know, stuff at him and, you know, celebrating with him. But it, it, listen, it, there's been a lot of sloppy play and I think they're trying to figure out how everyone fits into everything, but you have a solid group in uh, Schroeder or Schroeder. Uh, Lob Williams, as I'll call him, or Rob Williams, Time Lord, uh, Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown and uh, Tatum and Jason Tatum. And that's a pretty deadly five you have at the end of your game. And that game, uh, the last game they played the other night against uh, Charlotte, who were undefeated. Uh, yeah, they played a real, they were down 12 in the fourth. And I was watching on my phone. I was watching on, you know, uh, NBC sports app, which I recommend to anyone. If you have a child or if you're, you're just doing dishes and you're like, I need to do this stuff. I want to watch the game. It's perfect. Uh, I was watching them like, oh, they're down by X amount. And they just kind of, they, you know, put the uh, thumb screws down and they just kind of stopped a bunch of possessions and ran the ball. And their team that also they run, their engine is run on a turnover and fast break. And also that, that's where I think they're at their, yeah, I, I think that's where they're at their best when they cause turnovers and they just kind of run the other way. Uh, there's some ISO ball that they have to get used to. Their passing is up. It's only four games. They're two and two, uh, and they play the Wizards the next two games. But you know what? I And I always say it, and I know that's me copping out a little bit, but, yeah, I just it's an early season. I mean, I'll say that about the Patriots, too. I mean, it's a third of the way through. But, I mean, like, yeah, just keep watching. I Like, the Celtics, it's an 82 – it's a full full season this year. So we'll see how it goes. But I, I'm excited to see where they go with it. I think Jalen Brown has been great. He's uh, – him and Tatum have, lean, have been leaning on each other. I think it, like yeah. Brown, yeah. It's I don't know if you saw the opening uh, night against New York. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that was a great game, and that's one they easily could have won. Yeah, it's uh, went in overtime and a crazy uh, bit of overtime where you have a Marcus Smart three to, and they came back from the dead, and that it was a lot of fun. Uh, but they put themselves in a hole they shouldn't have been. 
but we'll see. I, th I think uh, Doku or uh, Doka is uh, has their ear. I think you're right. I think they. That I've actually said I've I've watched the four games. Yeah, I I, I think you're good. You know, I think you're good for a couple games at a time. You know, I think why? you're all right. Yeah. Why why, right. why do you think I've actually I've watched? Any idea? I don't know. Maybe to prove me yeah, wrong. I don't know. The nail right on the head. What do you think it is? Oh, I don't know. You just There's want to no see. There's no more Brad Stevens. No more Brad Stevens. Well, he's he's the GM, but yeah. I could not stand <laughs> his coaching style, yeah. his emotions, or lack thereof. Yeah. that he had zero <laughs> control over the children. This coach coming in, he's got him by the balls, and I love it. Well, no, not, I think you're right. I, you know what? I, I, I'm not, no, not, no, no, I know. He's not physically. Exactly. And that's that's a lot of work to actually physically each player have. I see by an the Alex Cora type. But, I see players yeah. that want to play for this coach. Yeah, a former player who yep. is young enough to kind of understand what's going on and yeah. who's come from a coaching tree. Yeah, uh, that's one. I think that you know? this is a great sign for this team. I think the fan base is going to be very happy, win or lose. I think it's going to be a lot more players wanting to play basketball. Last year, the, they just went through the mode. They didn't want to play. No way. Yeah, that's the worst wow. thing you can do. And you hit it nail on the head. I'll use that term again for uh, what you're saying i mean you could tell when they're not they don't care they're not playing the game they're just kind of like you said going through the motion so i mean yeah i i think there's going to be a lot more marcus smart said it uh the night after or uh, and charlotte when they won he said nine out of ten the last season nine out of ten games we'd lose this type of game so i mean it's coming from marcus smart so take it Tom, you like the bruins Wait, Tom, tell us uh, wait, Tom, tell us all about the Celtics. He just did. The who? <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm like I'm liking the Bruins. Um for the, for the most part, I think uh they need to figure something out with Allmark because he he does not look good at all. Um who is this? Who does not look good at all? Linus Allmark. Yeah. Yeah, he he looks like absolute crap. I mean, the team is the team is playing great in front of whoever's in net, but Allmark Allmark's not the guy. They got lucky on Sunday against the Sharks because that could have been a big loss right there. They were up. I don't know if you knew Phil. They were up. Was it three zero or four zero at one point? Four zero and end up being a and they lost. Game. No, oh, it ended okay. up being All a four three. Right. Well, that's better than losing, game. I guess. Yeah. I'm telling you guys, though, Allmark is going to be back down to Providence when Tuka Rask comes back. It's going to be a Tuka Rask, Jeremy Swayman net. That's going to happen. Rask is going to be here. Whether we think he's a savior or not, I have no idea. I do think Rask was playing injured last season. So to his uh, to a, to a positive outlook here. You might get a healthy Tuka Rask who will come back mid-season-ish and be very good. I Call me crazy here, but I think that Tuka wants to prove here that he can get a Stanley Cup, and I know we've said this for years here, but this could be your last chance. So the good news, too, is his timeline of coming back is he might get a couple games in after coming back before the Winter Olympics, and then he'll still get some rest. So you know we'll get we'll get to see how he looks first of all, and then he'll get some more rest after anyway. So I mean it it kind of kind of works out really for the for the team. The Linus Allmark move hot take is going to go down as a David Backus signing for the Bruins. I mean. To that's my take. To Sweeney's credit, uh, Al Mark had an outstanding season last year, but you also have to remember that he played for Buffalo. He, he was playing for Buffalo, and I know Tyler. Who, Ty, I was going to say Tyler Sagan. Sorry, I know Taylor Hall played for Buffalo too, but it's a different circumstance there. Well, and, and I mean Buffalo's defense is definitely subpar. And they gave up a lot of shots. So, I mean, the guy was putting up 30, 40 saves every, every game. And 
it, he looked a lot better than he actually does. And the Bruins don't give up that many shots. The defense is one of the – probably one of the best – I'd say top 10 defense in the league. Um, Bruins right now? I'd say just in general, the you know, the past – 15, 20 years, they've been one of the top 10. Who's the defense. one that we lost in the expansions? Was that Zaboral? What the, what's his name? Who did we lose in the expansion? Because we have Clifton here. Remember it was between Clifton and another player is the left-handed defenseman. Who the heck was that? <clears throat> I don't think whoever that name was, we're missing him. Crazy to no. say it. No. Um, it wasn't anybody that we were really looking at hoping that they protect so i do think we need to see riley back healthy i think that that's that's a a pillar right there of something that you you need to have and i think he'll be fine i want to make sure that we see brandon carlo not go down at any point this season with any more concussions that is right there i think pivotal for this team's yep. success pivotal yep. Because last season, it was the MASH unit on the defense. It was, oh, we're going to put this one here and this one here. It was an express train with Providence and, and Boston, and they, you know, made it work. But defense was the uh, was the end reason of why the Bruins did not advance, in my it opinion. Really, it really shows how much Carlo means to that team. And that, he means a big time. Before. Carlo and 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 Mr. Uh, Mr. Big McAvoy. Bucks now, McAvoy, which is big with his big contract that he got from there. So. I am optimistic. I think out of all of our teams right now, I know we haven't talked about the Patriots right now, but I still have raised the bar for the Bruins again to get back to the promised land and not choke it away. Because let's I mean, be honest they're... here. It's been a choke artist group. It's, they've got one cup, and that was Tim Thomas. That's it. That's it. They got to prove that they can get this done as a cohesive unit because this is definitely going to be the last chance i'm not even going to say this anymore this is it this is it figure it out yeah you're after after this year probably you're going to be in the in a more uh more severe rebuild stage um because they have they have been currently in a rebuild as as of right now but in the next couple of years, it's going to be more severe given who they're going to be losing. Yep. Um, but I think right now, I think they look uh, slightly above par, uh, and that's what we want to see right now. And then – Again, I know the Celtics and the Bruins play tonight. I'm just checking on who they are playing tonight. The Bruins uh, – the Celtics oh, play Panthers. the Wizards. They're yep. playing the Panthers. Wizards for the next two games. Like Bill yeah. said, the Wizards. Yep. And then the Bruins will play – the uh, Panthers. Tomorrow night, the Carolina Hurricanes, and then oh, again. Yes. Oh, the Cel- so uh, the Celtics play tonight, and then they don't play again until Saturday. So they got a little bit of a little bit of time right there. Okay, yeah. so the Bruins go Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. Saturday will be against the uh, Florida Panthers. The Bruins are on a road trip, so they are in Florida currently. It's probably hanging with Brady, and then uh, Carolina. They'll be at uh, tomorrow night. So that's, that's the outlook for the Bruins. We're going to finish off lastly here. And it's weird because we usually, with all the hype that this team generates for everything, Patriots are actually the number four team today. I don't know if we've ever had a show where the Patriots could talk about fourth. But guys, I mean, honestly, I think they do deserve the fourth right, right now. Agreed. I know this has been yeah. a Patriots town for, for forever here, but they got to prove it again. They got to prove it. They demolished the Jets, and everybody, a lot of the media are hyping it up, saying, oh, they're back. Look at this team. Oh, here they go. They'll be okay. Don't worry about it. This team's got a lot to prove. A lot of players down. A lot. There's no, no, lot, not that much depth to the team. But I do say the future is bright for Mac Jones. I will say that. I like Mac Jones. But – to compare him, some people are already starting to can say, oh, he's reminiscent of Brady and everything. No, he's not. Stop. Here Stop. And Stop there. that BS. Here and there. Here and there. Reminiscent there, of there, there's some, 
There are some things that he does that Brady did. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> no, I. I'm with Tom in certain way. Like, listen, he, the first he oh, go ahead. the ball around. He doesn't throw it to you know specific receivers. He he wants to get it to different receivers. That's like Brady. He moves, you know, right. He 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 moves pretty well in the pocket. You know what other similarity he has? He's a freaking quarterback. Wow, Tom Brady's a quarterback. Well, to add to Tom, I will agree with Tom. I actually think, and this isn't I being a homer. This is just he, he spreads the ball around. If you look at the last couple of games, you know he spreads it all around. Um, when they're not doing a trick play between receiver to receiver, but they have, uh, and also he he checks out. He he goes to his uh, running back option quite a bit, which Brady did. He uses a screen pass a lot as their running game. They also have a decent running game when it when it, when they can work it, but also the yeah, offense tick. Well, yeah, when they don't, yeah, cough off the ball, yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, also the offensive game plan, much like Brady in his first kind of year or first couple of years, has been uh, a lot of uh, screens, a lot of short passing, uh, not really uh, unleashing a lot on him, and a lot of game management. Uh, they don't really, I mean. Whether the player is similar or not, they're treating this kind of – they have this method of where they're kind of like not letting him do certain things, which, you know, he's a rookie. So yeah. – and there are a bunch of critics who would or, – or writers, I shouldn't say critics, but writers who mentioned he's – you know, you're going to see how the offense really flows around this time or like maybe even like halfway through the season, if not a little later. So – I yeah I think I think it's foolish to say like oh he's hey, look at this guy he's Tom Brady the second coming he's but it's not exact, fool- he's not an exact yeah. cop but and he's also we have to remember too he is also the best rookie quarterback right now in the league yes he Would is you say that that point, I, that point I I thought uh, Zach Wilson was the best quarterback though in the league yeah according to the oh draft, did are you well. <laughs> Not anymore. No, no but there was there was a legit there was a legit comparison and uh, argument to be made that Zach Wilson was a better quarterback. So I mean that is whether his team was horrible or not, him as a quarterback. If Zach Wilson was installed in a Patriots system <laughs> versus the Jets, I think that he would be okay. I think a lot yeah. of this has to fall on the horrid Jets, to tell you the truth. Uh, and also this They're a joke of a franchise, a joke. This game, this game also went a lot better than the last time we played the Jets. It's also our first, uh, the Patriots' first home victory. Um, that's so disgusting. I think that's disgusting. That, that's that's the that's the worst so part agreed, of about, yeah. about the whole look. But no, I, I think I think this game is was probably one of the best. I mean, I know it was against the Jets, but I think this was like the best game of the season so far. And I of think it's it, the best game of the season. I'm not discounting that 100. percent I, if they can't, if they can't come out of this game thinking, okay, hey, we still got a chance, we can actually prove something this season, then there's something wrong. Well, they have a chance to be 500 come this coming Sunday when they face off against the L.A. Chargers. So, hopefully, they can get the job done on that point. I mean, the Chargers, they're decent. I'm not going to say they're a joke. You know, they have Justin Herbert as their as their rookie, not their rookie, I think he's second year quarterback. And Sophomore everything. quarterback, yeah. So there's something to prove there. And I also think it might be beneficial that the Patriots are not at home because we all know how it's been at home so far. I know we just got the victory here against the Jets, but uh, I, I think that they could pull this one out too. So I'm, I'm hopeful that they get the job done this upcoming Sunday. I want to talk about the Bucks real quick before we wrap up this show too, because uh, they pulled off another great win uh, this past uh, Sunday. And again, I think that the, I, I don't even think this is the best team in the NFL right now. Plus we have to mention that Mike Evans uh, gave away Brady's 600 touchdown pass he ball. Did. But I he did, but I, he, 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 he got, got it back. back. Though. They got he it got back. It back. <laughs> No, that was, was, yeah. back. That there was, was a lot of there was a lot of class at the end of that game. There was a fan that <laughs> held was. Up the um, you know beating cancer or whatever it was. Little little this little boy and Tom Brady took care of the, the kid. Much to everybody's everybody knew what Brady was going to do for him. But again, it's yeah. just another. He one just of did his Miyagi thing and he going was out of his way to do something nice yeah. for somebody. Again, the people that can 
there's always going to be critics and everything out there, but yeah, when you're Tom Brady, I mean, that's like being a superhero. So, and that's an easy decision for him, to be honest. Him not doing something would be the more like of course it is kind of weird that national headline. Oh, yeah, it's, of course. And he it's like not to take away from it, but no, it's very nice and it's a good story. But it's like you know, he, he like he's not going to do that. Of course, he's going to do it. Right. Um, he did the right thing for you. Yeah. Yes. But it also didn't take away from the kid he did give a debilitating disease, disease to. But the yeah. kid deserved it. And we all know it. Of course, he so, did. I mean, yeah. if I was in the it's same a, anti Brady same thing, yeah, um, absolutely. No, but that uh, you're right. The way it ended with the uh, 600, which is insane, by the way, 600 TD passes, and no one who's going to come close to that. Maybe Mahomes, maybe, uh, but I don't know. Like is Mac, anyone Jones. Mac Jones. <laughs> uh, no, but who? who a- actively, actively, the only person who was really like Drew Brees was close, and you know what's his name? Uh, Aaron Rodgers is close enough, but I don't know if Aaron Rodgers will go the distance. I I don't think he's got more than five years left in him, and I don't know if he'll be able to do it. Not, not without like, Devonte Adams this weekend. Oh yeah, I yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, I mean, how long he's out for a bit? They have no receivers. They have no receivers, yeah. so it's going to get a little, a little crazy for them too. But I mean, six hundred. Uh, that's crazy. It is crazy. Anybody else have anything to add before we wrap up uh, this jam-packed edition here? We got uh, Arizona top. Cardinals could most could most likely be undefeated after this week. I yeah I think they're sleep they're That's not a sleeper surprise. team they've been they've had a great defense uh uh they're uh, what's it Kyle yeah Kyler, Kyle, what's it? Kyler Murray is amazing he was good as a right his is the second year right yeah yeah and he was he was great last year you remember that uh the Hail Mary uh throw to beat the the Bills last year that was one of my favorite yeah, moments of last year yep uh, yeah and they have Hopkins now and their defense is doing pretty well and they have a decent I think they got a lot going for them, and I'm looking forward to them. I, yeah, it's probably going to be them and the Bucks in the NFC Championship. Who knows? But you know what? I also happy Halloween to everyone. Uh, get your, I recommend uh, Midnight Mass on Netflix. It's a seven episode series. I remember you saying my, that. My you favorite. really like that. Yeah, I, I remember you I saying did. that. It's a. Uh, I recommend just watching any horror movie. Enjoy yourself. Have some candy. If you're diabetic, give the candy away. Uh, just, or if you need it, if you're one of those diabetics that needs uh, sugar, eat as much as you can. But right. you know, consult a doctor, as they say. <laughs> all but, right. Yeah. Thank you all for joining us for another episode of Face to Facts. Happy Halloween. We will see you next time in November for another episode of Face to Facts. See you guys later. <laughs>